Three weeks after Russia invaded Ukraine, the Taiwan Public Opinion Foundation conducted a film survey of over 1,000 Taiwanese over the age of 20. The survey yielded three important findings. First, most Taiwanese fear that if the CCP invades Taiwan, Taiwan will have to fight alone, just like Ukraine is fighting Russia alone. Secondly, if the CCP starts a war, a growing number of Taiwanese believe that the United States is not likely to send troops to help Taiwan. Third, more people think that Japan will help Taiwan. How has the Russian-Ukraine war affected the Taiwanese perception of the potential threat posed by the mainland? Hello, welcome to my show, I'm Lei. The poll conducted by the Taiwanese think tank on March 14th and 15th through live phone interviews found that more than 87% of people in Taiwan are sympathetic to Ukraine's current situation, and 55% of them are very sympathetic. This is because the Taiwanese are feeling similar threats from the mainland. Nearly 60% of the people surveyed worry that they will likely be in the same predicament once the CCP invades Taiwan, because they will have to face the Chinese invasion alone. This worry is linked to the 55.9%, or more than half of Taiwanese, who do not believe that United States will get involved militarily to help Taiwan defend itself. Only 34.5% believe the U.S. will send troops. If we analyze this data further, we can see that the percentage of those who don't believe at all that the U.S. will send troops is nearly 30% while the percentage of those who don't quite believe that the U.S. will send troops is 26.5%. The percentage of Taiwanese who strongly believe that the U.S. will send troops is only 10.5%. If we compare the polls conducted in October of last year, we can see that over the past five months, the percentage of those who believe the United States will send troops to intervene that is, the sum of those who strongly believe and those who fairly believe, has plummeted from 65% last October to 34.5% now, a drop of 30%. This means that within five months, 30% of Taiwanese stopped believing that the U.S. would send troops to help Taiwan. And the total percentage of those who don't think the U.S. will send troops has soared from 28.5% last year to almost 60% today, an increase of 27%. So how do we explain the reduced confidence in the United States in the past five months? The only major event that can explain it is the Russia-Ukraine war. It has significantly affected Taiwanese perception of the United States. There might be two factors. The first factor is related to China. After Russia invaded Ukraine, the United States has refrained from military action, including not sending ground troops and not declaring a no-fly zone over Ukraine. Instead, it is providing Ukraine with logistical military aid and launched joint sanctions against Russia. The White House has made it clear that it's not interested in starting World War III. The CCP has, in its propaganda, blamed the U.S. for the Russia-Ukraine conflict it has accused the United States of not keeping its promise to protect Ukraine and leaving Ukrainians stranded. Mainland Chinese media and social media have a strong presence in Taiwan, so Taiwanese are likely influenced by this view from the CCP's propaganda. The Biden administration has maintained a strategically ambiguous policy concerning relations with China and Taiwan. When questioned if the U.S. will send troops to Taiwan, the answer has always been that the U.S. remains committed to Taiwan. But what does committed mean? This is strategically unclear. Some Taiwanese saw that the United States had made the same kind of commitment to Ukraine, but only provided weapons now that Ukraine is in a crisis. So they think, oh, so this is the commitment the United States meant. The second factor of the reduced confidence is related to the United States. Those Taiwanese who are not influenced by the CCP propaganda might think the United States has underestimated or misjudged the CCP. They think the Biden administration's hope that China would pressure Russia not to invade Ukraine lacks prudence. After Biden's two talks with Xi Jinping in November and March, 
the U.S. has allowed China to formally declare that the U.S. does not support Taiwan independence and has no intention to conflict with China. This has made some Taiwanese question America's willingness to defend Taiwan. However, this pessimistic view may not be bad for Taiwan as it has reinforced the Taiwanese people's determination to defend their island on their own. More than 75% of the Taiwanese public believes that the length of the compulsory military service should be extended from four months to one year. The island's defense ministry said it is reviewing the policy and will have a proposal by the end of the year. Now, another interesting discovery of the poll is that 43% of the people believe that in the event of an attack from China, Japan will send troops to assist Taiwan's defense. This figure is higher than the 34.5% who say that the U.S. will send troops. In other words, 10% more Taiwanese have greater faith in Japan than in the United States. Taiwan and Japan share not only a historical bound, but also a strategic interest against the CCP's expansion in the Pacific. Taiwan and Japan's Okinawa Islands and the Southwest Islands are in the key position of the first island chain at the pivotal entry point of the East China Sea to the deep sea area of the Pacific Ocean. The CCP has secretly instigated an independence movement on Okinawa Island by promoting the narrative that Roiku people want to return to China. Robert D. Eldridge, a former political advisor for the U.S. Marine Corps in Japan, said the Chinese government had deployed thousands of agents provocateurs in Okinawa to rise up in the event of a conflict involving Beijing and Japan or Washington. In an opinion article for the Sunkei newspaper's Japan Forward site, Eldridge said local media was being used to promote the independence narrative and foment opposition to the U.S. military presence. Moreover, Japan and China also have a sovereignty dispute over the Diaoyu Islands, and a large part of the air defense identification zone between Japan and China over the East China Sea is overlapping and disputed. From this perspective, Taiwan and Japan have a common geopolitical challenge. Defending Taiwan, therefore, is tantamount to Japan. When the CCP escalated its threat of force against Taiwan, Japan kept reiterating that it would not sit by idle and could not stay out of it. That's why the Taiwanese believe that Japan's willingness to assist in Taiwan's defense is higher than that of the United States. However, since after World War II, Japan has a peace constitution that prohibits the country from sending military forces to intervene in foreign affairs, unless it's for self-defense. Recent reinterpretations of the law have allowed Japan to operate collective defense with allied countries in exceptional circumstances. In this regard, having a collective presence with the United States is crucial for Japan's involvement in a potential conflict with China. From this perspective, having a U.S. military presence is still strategically important for Taiwan. The war in Ukraine has likely changed China's plan for Taiwan. With the escalation of internal oppositions and his third term approaching, how has Xi Jinping reprioritized his strategy? I'll explain that topic next week. Have a great weekend, everyone, and I'll see you next time.